Hey, Riddle here. So excuse the odd camera angle, but I'm working with some really tall beams and I'm trying to get it in. So let me tell you the story here. I put up a very expensive deer fence for about $300, uh, maybe four or $500, including the concrete, something that would have cost thousands of dollars. Now, what I did is I actually used redwood beams from the forest. What's cool about this is they were little trees that uh, were either already dead or had to be removed. So I used my chainsaw and I took out eight to 10 foot beams and they were already dry, which was great. Now, what we have going on here is that I planted some grapes and they started growing onto the fence and the deer came over and ate them down to nothing. They literally pushed their heads through the fence, but they've already recovered, which is great. But now I have to have my plan B. The plan B is that I'm putting the secondary uh, place for them to climb up on the secondary uh, trellis, for lack of better words. And I'm using this inexpensive, like I did with the deer fence, it's a really inexpensive construction wire. Uh, they use this in construction. I think they actually use it in concrete also, kind of like a rebar to reinforce different things, hold things in. And I got a giant roll of it for about $250 and I didn't even use it all. And I did this entire backyard with it, which is quite a few square footage, I'll let you know. So when you're setting your beam, if you do live in a redwood forest or have another hardwood that you could take advantage of this and not have to buy it at the lumber store, which is a lot more earth friendly too, which is super cool. So it's free and you're doing the planet a favor. First thing you want to do is make sure that the timber that you got that you cut out of the forest isn't too decomposed. Like redwood will last forever, but even redwood, if it's laying on the ground, gets soft and buggy. The second thing, you're going to use a post hole digger. This is every gardener's best friend. And you're going to make the hole in the ground and you're going to go down 12 to 14 inches. So you want to add that, you know, in addition to however tall you're going to make your trellis. You're going to dig it out and you're going to make it two to three times the size of the width of your beam. Then you're going to pour a little bit of, you need to buy fence post concrete mix. The good thing about that is it's the cheapest one. You're gonna pour about two to three inches in the bottom of your hole. Then you're gonna stick your beam down in the hole and then you're gonna fill it up. After the concrete is filled, you'll see that your pole will be pretty stable. You're gonna back up and make sure that it's straight, you know, so it doesn't look all half-assed. And then you're going to just hose the water on top of your dry concrete. And you wanna take, take time to do this right because it's gonna take a while for it to soak down into the concrete. So it might take 10, 15 minutes gently putting the water onto the concrete. Now, another tip I have is that this mounding of concrete around the beam did not happen because of expansion. I purposely did this. So I used an oil pan. I mixed a nice thick amount of concrete and I, I built it up around. And what this is going to do, it's going to keep the water from pooling and going down and rotting my beam. Now you're going to let this set up for at least 24 hours and then we'll be able to add our fencing to it. And then I can train these grapes onto this fence and they'll be out of the way of the deer sticking their heads through and munching on it and they should be able to really thrive here and that's going to be great. One more tip, you have another option and I did do this with my beams that are uh, all the way around my garden and that is they sell different types of chemicals that uh, preserve wood and keep fungus from growing on them. Now, I'm not going to name anything specific. Just go to Home Depot and look for wood protectant. But you want one that is, you know, really oily and one that actually helps to prevent fungus and rotting. Um, they're pretty toxic, though. And the best way to put it on is with a, a spray bottle, uh, a, a, a pump sprayer. So, you know, make sure it's not a windy day. Put on your mask and stuff. Or you can pre-paint them before you sink them. That's another option you have. But if you do the wood protectant on them, you know, they're gonna last twice as long 
or better. So it's, it's worth the investment because you're putting all this time and energy, even though you're saving a lot of money, why not save even more money by doing it right and doing something that lasts. And that's it. This will, uh, this will save you a lot of money and it works. It works great. I haven't had one deer come in and these beams have been, they're, they're super solid and I'm really happy with, uh, with this, uh, the innovation of this idea. Okay, thank you for visiting my channel. Uh, if you like my money-saving tips and my different ideas of gardening, please subscribe, it helps. I will continue to post what I'm doing in the garden and anything that I learned that I think you can benefit from. Take care of yourselves, take care of each other, and feel free to comment away. You know, I, I love people to add knowledge and share knowledge. I love questions, and unlike a lot of other YouTubers, I'm very responsible, and I try to reply as quickly as possible unless I'm somewhere that I cannot. And I do travel, so sometimes the internet connection, so please excuse me, but I will return your comment. Take care. Take care of each other. Bye for now.